Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom, as always on this channel, of course. So today we're going to be doing a pretty simple video, but it can be super useful for you. The code's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, there's been multiple times where <clears throat> I'm going to be writing a bunch of ifs or, you know, whatever, maybe a bunch of loops, uh, you know, whatever your situation is. We're going to be using ifs in this one. And it's like, okay, my code, if I write this out manually, it's going to be 3,000 lines of code. But every if is pretty much the same thing, but only slightly different. Maybe the URL is slightly different in each one. Maybe uh, what variable, what you're looking for in a variable is going to change. But you're going to have a ton of options. You know, even though you can sit there, copy and paste that if function over and over and over again and just make those two small little variable changes. If it's going to be a ton of these, it's going to be insanity. It's going to take you forever. So I've done this a few times uh, where I had a situation like that where it's just, it's going to be like an hour or two worth of work of coding when it's just basically the same thing with some slight changes. So instead what I've done is I'll take five to 10 minutes I'll write, you know, a little bit of code that will then automatically generate those few thousand lines of code instead. You know, I definitely rather do that, and I'm sure you would too. So obviously this situation is not going to always uh, be something that you're going to need, um, but, you know, if it ever does come up, you'll now have an idea of how to do it, and it's pretty simple to adapt to. You know, for the most part, you're going to be able to copy all my code and then just change the information, the variable to match whatever you want it to say, what you want in your if uh, functionality. So it's very easy to adapt to whatever situation you're going to be using. So obviously there's different ways to do this, uh, but, you know, like I said, it's all going to be situational and what you prefer. If you want to do uh, hours of worth of coding, maybe get paid a little more at work. I say go for it. Don't do this then. <laughs> Get, get as much money as you can if you uh, if they don't know you can do this. But if you don't feel like spending time and staying late, this might be useful. <laughs> so, like I said, the code's very simple. So, it says 25 lines of code right here. But obviously, I have some breaks uh, in here that you don't technically need. Like, we don't need this, this, or that. So, uh, what do we got here? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's actually 19 lines of actual code. Obviously, I spread stuff out to, you know, be more visible in the video, easier to read. Uh, it just looks a little cleaner, but, you know, obviously you can get rid of, like, spaces like this. Like, you don't need those there. Um, but just for the sake of the video... It's uh, just a little easier for you guys uh, who are viewing this. So, in my example, I have uh, pulled every single command from the Auto Hockey uh, documentation on their website. So, I just named the variable all commands. You know, simple. Like I said, this is something you can change to be whatever you want as long as you make it match down here, which we'll see here in a minute. Equals. And uh, this is what I had generated in a text file using another script, uh, which I can always show you how I did that. If you guys are interested, that could be another video on how I was able to grab all this information. Um, basically, I used HTML. I copied the HTML from the website and then just had like um, a loop that kind of went through all the HTML, looking for all the uh, commands, and then deleting all the other HTML, and then putting it into the format like this. Uh, obviously, you don't have to have a pipe in between. I just thought that was easier because uh, it's more visible to break it down when you're viewing it as a variable. So yeah, as you see, let's look. I don't even know how many there are. I'd never actually count it, and I'm not going to count on this video because there's probably 200 plus. But look at this. Watch me scroll. And if you, yeah, you can see my scroll bar at the bottom, how small it is. Look at this. Oh, man, and I'm flying. I'm going really fast through this. You know, see, we're, we're only on the O's right now. So it is alphabetized. On the S's. Keep going. We're almost there. We're in the W's. 
And boom, we reached the end. So yeah, that's a lot. And what I want to do is I want to make an if for every single one of these. So if someone's in like a GUI or something with a drop down or a list view of this, I need to make an if for like every single one or whatever your situation is. I mean, like I said, you saw how much there was. Even if I'm copying and pasting, and all I'm changing is the variable to say if it equals win move, do this action. If it equals win maximize, perform this action instead or go to this URL. That's going to take me forever. I don't want to do that because that's going to probably be around 3,000 lines of code. Uh, I'd rather do it in 19 lines of code in less than a second. So yeah. So, you know, you're copying and pasting my code, making a few changes. It's going to take you five minutes at the most to adapt this to your situation and one second to run it and boom you've got like three hours worth of code completed so first thing we do is we need to break all this up individually so we're just going to create a an array we're using string split there's you know different types of string splits out there um, i just have always liked this one a little better just because it's what i'm used to i know it's a little there's another way to do it that's uh, pretty popular too. Um, so it's whatever you want to do. Both work exactly the same. Uh, so we're taking all our commands. So in the third section here is where we're going to put uh, the name of our variable. You don't need to put percent signs in it because it knows that whatever's here is going to be a variable. Um, we want to split the entire thing up using this as the marker basically of where we're splitting so it's basically it takes all this up oh, it sees that little pipe character so it knows that this is number one in the array or zero well no zero would just be the count so it would be number one uh just in case you don't know arrays start at zero but in auto hockeys when you're using a string split the variable zero is actually going to be a count of how many uh, variables were created a lot of people don't know that <clears throat> um then it'll you know say okay you know that's number one okay now I'll start getting and then it's going to hit that pipe again and it's going to go okay this is number two so this will you know run through there i mean even though it's like probably 200 plus commands it's going to do it in a fraction of a second so like it's it could be thousands of uh words in here commands or whatever you're using client names it doesn't matter it's gonna i could be thousands and thousands it's gonna do it in under a second like it's so fast and it's hardly gonna use any of your uh, cpu usage like you're not gonna notice any lag or anything if you have other stuff running like it's it's that's one thing that's really great about auto hotkeys is how light of a program it is uh so it's gonna split it all up it's gonna put it out into arrays it's going to be using a index so it's the output's going to be output words array one output words array two etc until it gets to the end realizes there's no more information and it'll stop so now we need to create our loop and what our loop's going to be doing is it's going to be creating it's going to take that data from up there and it's going to be creating every single if one by one once again even though it's 200 plus you'll see here in a minute it's going to do it in like one second, no problem, if a second, honestly. But you'll see how fast it goes when we run this. Um, so we're taking current word, and we're basically getting whatever our current word is. So as it loops through, it's going to do output words array, and it's going to do A index, which is like a counter. So it's going to go one. When it hits here again, it, a index suddenly becomes two and then three and so on until it reaches the maximum number for our array of what has information in it. So now here's really where you guys are going to be making your changes. So this can kind of be a little confusing to look at at first. So it is an if command in here, but this is not actually going to run because I have a variable here. And a lot of times, you know, people are used to doing variables like this where it's one line. But just so you know, you can actually do it in multiple lines. So what you do is you do an equals and then underneath of it on the next line, you use uh, these uh, brackets here. You just put them in there and anything that's in between these, even if it's code, it's not going to run. It's going to just be stored as a string 
and this is great because with it doing it this way it's going to keep the formatting um, yes you could do all this in one line and you could use like uh, what are called line built-in line breaks which is just the uh, that and the uh, in and then I could put like you know this here then do another line break and that but this is just more visually appealing basically is uh, you know basically the best way to say it so just it's, it's just more visually appealing because um, then you can actually see what it's going to look like uh, especially if it's going to be a long like paragraph or something and you know it's, it's just better just do it do what I say <laughs> um, so as you see here what it's going to do is I have an if if equals v1 mode so basically I have an IDE I create it if you guys want to check out a video I did on that on my IDE that I created it's basically checking if you're in v1 or if you're in v2 mode so version 1 version 2 of AHK and so basically we're going to say yes we are in v1 mode um, so then it wants to run something so the auto hotkey forms as you see the the url is exactly the same for every single command except for right here is where you're going to put you know this you would place it here and then it would go to the website at when minimize or whatever you pick so it's basically going through our array one by one taking whatever's next in line and it's going to inject it right here into the URL. So we got our percent signs saying that, hey, this is a variable. So it pulls from here. Oops. Uh, so it pulls from here, and it's going to do that. Uh, then it's going to get down here. So our variable's been created for uh, this function with whatever was next in line. Then we're going to do all code. And the reason we're doing that is we want to save the code that's already been created by our loop. And then we want to add, you know, whatever step it's on. We want to add the new function. Then, you know, keep the old code, add the new function, and we're doing that line break right there. So that helps a lot. Oh, there's my alarm. Um, and then, basically, we have a break here so we can get out of our loop. So if current word is blank, meaning it's, it, it hit the end of the array, there's nothing there, it, it's basically saying, hey, we're done. Go ahead and break outside the loop. It's going to come out here. And then it's going to copy all my code to my clipboard. Now, this you could change if you want it. If you're okay with it going to your clipboard, go for it. Uh, you could change this to be a file save. So then it just saves to a text file versus your clipboard. This is something else you can adapt to, you know, however you want it, your final results to be saved. And just to help us out, um, we have a message box that says all done. Uh, you don't need this if you don't want it. Uh, I just put it there for this video so that we can see how fast this is going to run. Um, you know, just in case there's any hiccups, then we know it actually did finish too. So if you want this, you can have it, change it, the wording to whatever you want, or just delete it. It's up to you. And our hotkey, I forgot to mention, is F1 as usual. So yeah, we'll run the code and uh, let's uh, see this in action. So uh, let me just copy some random text here. I'm going to open... Um, We'll just open here and so as you see i just did control v that is currently in my clipboard so my clipboard has that in it randomly so let's uh where is it there it is all right script is now running so we are going to go ahead we're going to push f1 in three two one press boom do you see how fast that was wasn't even a second to run not only the string split and the loop and everything like that's how fast it was all right well what happened that was what did i say i think 19 lines of code less than a second let's paste let's do control v because it should be in our clipboard now boom three thousand just over three thousand one hundred lines of code took me five minutes to write the original script and one second to actually run it. Well, a few seconds because I do have to double click on it at a desktop. And I just wrote 3,100 lines of code. So let's take a look at it now. Did it work? So as you see, you know, every if is the same. Run, return, everything's formatted the same. But as you'll notice where that variable was, look, we got win weight, win size, win show, win set title. 
it's amazing. You know, so I just wrote with 19 lines of code, I just wrote over 3,000 lines of code in no time at all. This would have taken me forever to do manually, uh, even with just copy and pasting every single one. But then I'm sitting there having to copy and paste that. And, oh, well, as you see, the link works. It took me to win maximize. I didn't mean to open that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions uh, or anything about this, definitely let me know. Uh, if you guys ever end up using this, let me know what you used it for. I'm curious. Uh, it's pretty cool. If you want to see how I was able to do uh, some wind scraping with the help of someone, uh, let me know. On I can show you how I was able to get every single item using the HTML off the website. Uh, it's a little tricky, especially when you're using Chrome because uh, Chrome is kind of crappy at keeping, uh, just so you guys know, I, I can dive into it in the next video. Uh, if you guys are interested, let me know. Hit that like button, lets me know that you guys are interested, and helps me out. Uh, but yeah, I use the HTML. Chrome is a little tricky because while you can copy the HTML from the console, uh, it loses all its formatting. But there are these things out there on Google called, you know, uh, Beautify or Prettify. Uh, I always call them Beautify. And um, you just plug in the HTML into an HTML Beautifier. And you say format, and it'll actually reformat it for you. So that's just a tidbit to throw out there for you. Uh, you know, there's ones out there for HK2 in case, you know, let, let's say you... Um, take over a project from some predecessor who didn't know what they were doing and literally all their code was this i call this to the wall coding like this is not formatted very good looking but let's say you have three thousand lines of code do you really want to sit here going through pushing tab on every single thing you can literally find an hk beautifier copy and paste it over there and say format and it'll automatically go through and add tabs where they need to go, all that kind of stuff. So that's always something cool to look at. I'll probably do a video if you guys are interested. Hit that thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. Always throwing video guys at you for automation, mostly in AHK. I'll see you guys on the next one.